Juan, the new white folding soap as pure as fine Castile presents the Joan Davis Show. Poor Joan ain't got nobody. <clears throat> She's nobody's sweetheart now. <laughs> <laughs> The romantic singing of Andy Russell. With a great comedy cast, including Berna Felton, Shirley Mitchell, the music of Paul Weston and his orchestra, and your sincerely Harry Bonzell. And here's the star of our show, America's Queen of Comedy, Joan Davis. Oh, hey, Joe. oh no. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, come over here now, will you? Get up off that soldier's lap. That is not what he's fighting for. <laughs> Joan, listen. Come up here now, will you? Be a good girl. <laughs> oh, gee, Harry, I was having so much fun. What do you want, anyway? What do I want? I wanted to know if you enjoyed my fraternity dance after the football game Saturday night. Oh, sure I enjoyed the dance. Why do you ask? Well, I didn't see you dancing with anybody all evening. Oh, that. Well, I was too proud to dance. Too proud to dance? Certainly none of the men asked me, and I was too proud to ask any of the women. Swanville, USA, October 22nd. Hollywood comes to Swanville today. Today with Swanville news dealers receiving their latest issues of Hollywood star-studded movie magazines in beauty parlors, offices, club rooms, and kitchens. Glamour-starved women gaze longingly at pictures of their favorite movie idols. But nowhere in Swanville do we find glamour more starved than in... Johnny Tea Room. Joan Davis speaking. Oh, hello, Mrs. Dolan. Yes, I just got my copy of Snappy Super Screen Scoop. Mm-hmm. Sure, it's full of beauty hints on how to make yourself glamorous. And one article says that most of the Hollywood stars owe their glamour to a diet of buttermilk. Why don't I try it? Listen, what Betty Grable's got, you don't get from buttermilk. <laughs> Hiya, Tony. Hey, what are you reading? Oh, a Hollywood movie magazine. Look at this new cowboy. Uh, co he's a new cowboy star, and he's signed by RKO. See the cowboy right there? Yeah. <laughs> Cowboy star signed by RKO. That's silly. If he's a cowboy, he should sign with MGM. They've got the horses. MGM's got the horses? Sure. Haven't you ever heard of the Metro Goldwyn Mayor? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, get off the fishing net, Father. I got a jerk at the end of my line. <laughs> hey, hey, look at this item, Joni. Atomic Film Studios start nationwide hunt for new singing star. Boy, what an opportunity for Andy Russell. Uh, Say, where is Andy Russell? Uh, oh, washing dishes again. <laughs> Joan, that guy's always breaking dishes. You ought to have a long talk with him. Well, I did, Harry, but when he looked at me with those big, brown, innocent eyes, something inside of me melted. It did? Yeah. I gotta stop carrying butter in my money belt. <laughs> But this time, Harry, I'm going to be firm with that boy. Yeah, well, it's about time. Andy, Andy Russell, come in here. Yes, Miss Davis. Give it to him good. Yeah. You, you broke some dishes, didn't you? Yes, Miss Davis. Tell him off, mm -hmm. Joe. Now, will you look me straight in the eye and say that you're sorry? Gosh, I'm sorry, Miss Davis. Hmm. Oh, Harry. What? There goes that butter again. <laughs> I just read in the movie magazine that Atomic Film Studios are looking for a new singer. Oh? Now, would you like to go to Hollywood and become a movie star? Oh, boy, would I? Who wouldn't? After all, I'm human. Gee, I wish I could say that. <laughs> See, Andy, I got a swell idea. We'll send Atomic Studios a phonograph record of your voice. You know, Rosella Hipperton has a recording machine at her house, and I'm sure she'll let us use it if Harry asks her. Piffle, why should I ask her? You're not doing anything for me. As usual, you're doing it for Andy. Why, Harry, you sound jealous. Jealous? Yes, jealous. G-E-L-U-S, jealous. <laughs> Come on now, let's close up and go over to Hippie. <laughs> Say, 
Harry, I certainly appreciate your coming over to Area Hippie's house with me and Andy. And after all, you're sticking your neck out visiting her. Whenever Hippie sees you, she smells orange blossom. Oh, no. She likes me, Joan, but she's not really thinking of marriage. I'll ring the bell. <laughs> oh, that hippie doesn't miss a trick. Oh, hello, Miss Davis. Hello, Mr. Russell. Oh, and Mr. Von Zell. Hello. <laughs> well, hello, Mrs. Uh, Hipperton. Rosella, I hope you don't mind our dropping in on you like this, out of the blue. Oh, not at all, Harry. If I dropped in on you out of the blue, what would you say? Bombs away! Miss <laughs> <laughs> yes, Davis, every time I see you, it exasperates me. But, Mr. Von Zell, every time I see you, my little heart pumps so madly, I just can't control it. Well, maybe your carburetor needs adjusting. <laughs> Miss Davis, I... Maybe your battery needs recharging. Oh, really? I think you have too much air in your spare. No. <laughs> uh, after all, Mrs. Joe, we want Mrs. Hipperton to help us. Oh, yes. Shame on me. Double shame on me. Oh, no, Miss Davis. Shame on me. I've been very thoughtless. Uh, may I offer you something, Mr. Russell? Drink, candy? No, no, thank you. Mr. Von Zell, would you care for a cigarette? Oh, yes, thank you. Well, help yourself. They're right in that cigarette box on the table. Uh -huh. Open it. All right. <laughs> what do you know? This place is wired for matrimony. <laughs> This is a lovely home you have here, Mrs. Hipperton. Yeah. You know, Rosella, I was once engaged to a girl who had a home just like this. Her name was Lulu. She wasn't a beautiful girl. She wasn't even an attractive, but I loved Lulu anyway. Why? She used swan soap. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Lulu knew that swan is the new white floating soap that's pure as fine Castile's and plenty mild, you know. So mild, the doctors recommended for a baby's tender skin. And Lulu also knew that if it was good for babies, it was good for her complexion, for her shower tub, too. Oh, yes. Many an evening I used to drop in and watch it float in the bathtub. Lulu? Yeah. No! <laughs> well, Swan. <laughs> you had me worried for a minute. Yeah. Well, you'll never have to worry, Mrs. Hibberton, when you use Swan, because it's so mild and so gentle, it'll leave your hands soft and lovely after the dishes. And what suds you get? Long-lasting, hard-working suds. Yes, like many other women, Lulu discovered that Swan is wonderful. But one night, we had an argument. I lost my temper. I, oh, no. I guess I, I just didn't know my own strength. Oh. I broke my loved one in half and put half in the kitchen and half in the bathroom. Swan? No, Lulu. <laughs> oh, I Say tell I get a million yeah. eyes. Say, Hippie, can we use your recording machine? We want to make a record of Andy's voice and send it to Hollywood. Atomic Film Studios are looking for a new singer. Woo! Isn't that exciting? Here, Mr. Russell, just sing into this little microphone. Okay. I'll turn the machine on. How much do I love you? I'll tell you no lie. How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? How many times a day?
does justice to Andy's voice. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Why, only this morning I used it to record a lovely poem I wrote and dedicated to Mr. Von Zell. To me? It's called Happy Wedding Bell. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, Harry, you might as well stay for dinner. I think your goose is cooked. <laughs> well, I'd like to hear this, Hippie. Go ahead, play the record. Oh, when I hear those wedding bells, this will a happy day be. And who knows, dear, within a year, the stork may bring a baby. A baby. A baby. A baby. A baby. A baby. Hippie, a shut it off. <laughs> We're running out of talcum powder. <laughs> oh, Miss Davis. Oh, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Something went wrong with the automatic changer. Well, if you're going to have that many hippie, you'll need an automatic changer. <laughs> well, we got to be going now, hippie. Thanks a lot. Yes, thanks, Rosella. Oh, wait, wait. I'll see you to the door, Harry. And while I'm about it, I'll put my little kitten out. All right. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, no. <laughs> Hollywood, California, today... Today, fame came to unknown campus pruner Andy Russell. Atomic Film Studio head L.B. Stiefel startled the movie world by announcing that he was sending a complete camera crew headed by the famed foreign director Vladimir Vestov to... Hey, Andy, take off that apron and put on your coat. He's here. Who's here? Vladimir Vestov, the director. Open the door for him, Harry. How do you do, Miss Davis? Yes. Uh, welcome to Joni's Tea Room, Mr. Vestoff. Oh, I'm not Mr. Vestoff. I'm his assistant. This is the great Vladimir Vestoff. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Vestoff? Buona dobra, kretschma samovar, gooey halva. Well, thanks, and a gooey halva to you, too. <laughs> uh, what's he talking about, anyway? The great Vestoff speaks only Russian. Besides being his assistant, I am also his interpreter. Oh, well, tell Mr. Vestoff that I'm very happy that he's going to direct Andy Russell's screen test. Mr. Vestoff, she is very happy that you are going to direct Andy Russell's screen test. <laughs> tell her I'm very happy to direct the test. Mr. Vestoff says he is very happy to direct the test. <laughs> see, well, I'm certainly glad you came along as interpreter. <laughs> uh, Mr. Vestoff, uh, this is your new singing star, Andy Russell. Andy, this is Mr. Vestoff. How do you do, Mr. Vestoff? Please, get up off your knees. <laughs> Assistant, we make screen test right here in Tiro. Come, we go get camera crew. Be ready, you Russell. Oh, gee, Andy, promise me if you do get to Hollywood and see all those pretty girls, you won't forget me. Oh, I don't care about pretty girls, Miss Davis. I like you. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I mean, Miss Davis, is that, well, in my book, I rate intelligence first, charm second, and beauty third. Well, how do you like that? I finished out of the money again. <laughs> oh, Andy, Andy. Oh, it's Barbara Weatherby. Hello, Barbara. Hi, yeah, Babs. They're going to shoot Andy's screen test any minute. I arranged the whole thing. Miss Davis, as far as Andy's future is concerned, I think it's time you faded into the background. 
After all, no possible good can come to Andy by associating with a person of your ilk. Ilk? Yes, ilk. Ain't that the stuff the ilk man delivers in Ottles? <laughs> oh, well, really, Miss Davis. St. Babs, did you ever see an ilk maid ilking Elsie the owl? <laughs> Notice anything different about my makeup today? Well, let me see. Yes, it looks kind of heavy. Mm, well, it's movie makeup. I thought they might want somebody to play opposite you in the screen test, so I stopped at the beauty parlor and had them put some Max Factor makeup on my face. Don't you think I look like Lauren Bacall? You look more like Max Factor. <laughs> Now, look here, Babs. If anyone acts with All Andy... All right, uh, bring in the equipment. Lights over there. Yes, Mr. Vestoff. Camera right here. Yes, Mr. Vestoff. And remove that ugly hat rack. Yes, Mr. Vestoff. Put me down. <laughs> oh, Mr. Vestoff, you're such a wonderful director. And I'd like to ask you... Wait. A... Do not talk. Stand still, my little pigeon. You should be in picture. You are beautiful. Beautiful? <laughs> yes. Yes? <laughs> of course. Do your blitzes taste different lately? <laughs> oh, Mr. Vestoff, were you really serious about my being in pictures? Of course. I will use you in the screen test. Uh, the great Vestoff is always looking for a new face. Hey, did you really mean that? Positively. Well, I can tell you how to get a new face. Oh. Take your old one and wash it with swan. Oh. Swan? Of course. Certainly. <laughs> Mr. Vestoff, swan's great for faces. Old faces, new faces, all kinds of faces. And what's more, swan's four soaps in one. Ms. Vitica Bordogna? Uh, da, da. Yeah, well, to the soap for your complexion. <laughs> Soap for your complexion, for bathing the baby, for dishes, and for light laundry. Four uses, four soaps in one. That's swan. Bathing the baby. Bathing the baby. What a motion picture that would make. Yeah, you could call it Destination Sopio. <laughs> I will hire... Uh, uh, I will hire Hollywood immediately. I will get the French star Pepe Lamoco to play it. What do you need Pepe Lamoco for? I can play it. Listen to this. Ah, uh, Hedy. Come with me to the kitchen, and I will show you the Casbar. Casbar in the kitchen? Certainly, Casbar of swan soap. Oh. <laughs> well, um, I think I make a joke. That's the littlest joke I ever heard. <laughs> swan soap, Sio. It is for the kitchen, the bathroom, for any soap and water job in the house. Everything she can be done better with those wonderful swan suits. Suits? This man talked with accent. <laughs> yes, Hetty. Those ever-loving swan suits are magnifique. Ooh la la. Swan is four great soaps in one. Un, deux, trois, four. <laughs> Vive la swan. Say, Mr. Vestoff, how about using me in this screen test with Andy? You, an actress? <laughs> what makes you think you can act? Well, once in high school, I was in a play and I acted the part of a woman. That must have taken some awfully good acting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, look here, Tallulah Lunkhead. Oh. Quiet! We have no part for you, Miss Davis. Now, I will explain beautiful love scene which reaches magnificent finish when you, Mr. Russell, and your sweetheart, Barbara, are discovered in a tender embrace. You look into her eyes, kiss her passionately, and say... May I use your telephone? <laughs> That'll set passion back 20 years. <laughs> oh, oh, it's you. You know where the phone is, mister. Right over on the wall. What if that guy's using slugs on me? Hello? Jennifer? This time, nothing can prevent our wedding. I stopped by the dressmaker and ordered your wedding gown. Then I stopped by the beauty parlor and ordered your toupee. <laughs> What's that, Jennifer? You don't like the shape of your head? It's too flat? You're taking out the pencil sharpener? You're putting your head in it? Don't sharpen your head, Jennifer! Don't sharpen your head! <laughs> Thank you, miss. <laughs>
Get the point? <clears throat> Gee, this is exciting. Will Jennifer really put her head in the pencil sharpener? I can't wait till the next thrilling episode in the life of Jennifer. Girl ever sharp. <laughs> oh, Mr. Vestoff, I still say you're making a mistake not letting me act opposite Andy. Quiet. And remember, Mr. Russell, in this test, you are playing the part of a Spanish Don Juan. Mm -hmm. And you, Miss Weatherby, are his American sweetheart. All right? Now we start the scene. Lights, action, camera. Who is it? Senorita, it is me, your lover. Jose Don Carlos del Paso, el lobo raso. Oh, come in. Buenos dias, senorita. You are happy to see me? Oh, I'm always happy to see my little Jose. And I'd be happy to see a little nylon Jose. <laughs> Senorita Barbara, I have come to take you to the fiesta. You will be the most beautiful girl there. Do you really think so, Jose? See, si, see, si. your eyes, they look like diamonds. Your ears, they look like shells. And your lips, they look like rubies. Doesn't anything on her look like flesh? <laughs> Please. Oh, Jose, you're so handsome. I'm mad about you, mad. <laughs> Quiet! Meh. <laughs> that was a small goat, a little kid. <laughs> Mr. Vestoff, I think he got a slow leap. <laughs> oh, Jose. Jose, will you marry me? Marry you? Yes, Jose, you must marry me. I love you. Love you, I tell you. Love you. You're the only one that matters. I can't go on living without you. I won't give you up, I tell you. I won't! I won't! I won't! <laughs> she also does light comedy. <laughs> oh, I've had enough of this. Andy, if you go to Hollywood, it'll have to be without me. Good night! Mr. Russell, if you go to Hollywood, it will have to be without me, too. Never in my life have I seen such crazy people. Good rubbish to bad ridden. Oh, gee, Annie, I'm so sorry. I spoiled everything for you. Oh, don't take it to heart, Miss Davis. I don't think I wanted to work for Vestoff anyway. And besides, I wouldn't like to leave you. Oh, isn't Andy sweet, Harry? Isn't Andy sweet, Harry? What's so sweet about him, anyway? I wouldn't leave you either, Joni. After all... You know how I feel about you. How? Well, I'm a man, and you're a woman. Gee, you learn something new every day. back in just a minute. And while she's gone, I'd like to ask you housewives a question. Do you have any used kitchen fats? Because if you do, your butcher will now give you four points a pound for it. Four, not two. Four points. That's how important used fat is. It's really needed, urgently needed for many, many essential uses. Turn it in and keep on turning it in, won't you? Thank you very much. Now, here's Joni again. Well, Harry... Oh, Mr. Von Bell, guess what's happening in Swanville next week? What? They're starting a campaign for a new mayor, and I'd like to propose you as our candidate. Little old baggy pants, me. <laughs> oh, we can't lose, Harry. With me on your side, we'll crush all opposition. Squash is the word. <laughs> Miss Davis, that remark was entirely uncalled for. Well, if it isn't called for in 30 days, you can have it. <laughs> we have a... 
show presented by Swan Soap is produced and directed by Big Mac and is written by Jay Summers, Jack Harvey, and Cy Will. In just five minutes, you'll hear the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Lost Angels, starring Margaret O'Brien, George Murphy, and Donna Reed. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcast.